Kevin Shannon here from Better Than Takeout. Today we're going to prepare for you a traditional pot roast. You know, we already did the Mississippi pot roast, which is always a fan favorite for our house, but today we're going to do a traditional one. So we're going to use about a two and a half, three pound chuck roast here, and I've already cut up some red potatoes. I've got some carrots over there, and I cut up a small onion. And that stuff, we're just going to toss it in here. Um, I don't think this is going to take too long to cook, so uh, we'll go ahead and get everything in. I've also got some minced onion off to the side and some OBQ steak maker that we're going to put on. And this bowl, this is basically just some um, cut up like that fine beef bouillon along with some onion powder, garlic powder, nothing serious. And then, of course, we'll add in our handy cooking stock. You know, we love using the beef stock, so let's go ahead and get this tossed in here. The good thing about doing a pot roast is you can actually put in anything you want. You can add more, you can add less, and it just, it does its own thing for you. So, so let's go ahead and add this stuff in. We're just going to throw it in. It doesn't have to be rocket science because you're going to move it all around anyway as you're cooking it. I'm going to just sprinkle this on top. I'm going to also sprinkle it on my vegetables as well because we want it to make a nice sauce. Make you some uh, biscuits or something, you can have you some nice gravy to go on them as well. Add in some of this OBQ steak maker. If you've never heard of this, um, you might want to look up the website. This is a really great seasoning and it goes well on all types of beef products. And then we're going to add in some minced onion. Can't ever have too much onion. Just gives it a good flavor. And now, we'll add in our beef stock. I'm not going to add this whole container. I'm just going to do about half of it. So that way we're, because the steak is, I mean, the roast is going to make its own juices as well. Um, but we definitely don't want it to dry out. What I'm going to do is set it on low for the 8-hour cook mark. But I will be checking it periodically. And I will come back and let you guys see what we've got going on. We'll just cook it until it's done. We don't need to set a time limit on it, but yep, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and get this lid on, get it slow and low, set for eight hours, and we'll be back with you. All right, guys, so we've been going roughly about two hours here. We're going to take off this lid. We're going to check it out, and we are going to baste it a little bit. Um, I always like to do that, just kind of get a little bit of extra flavor on top of the meat. As you can see, we've got some good juice going on in here. And go ahead and stir this around a little bit. It smells super good. My little girl just came in and said, Mommy, I'm ready for dinner. So, you know that's a good sign. So let me just get a little bit of this juice on. Not too much. I don't want to get the vegetables. I just want to get the juice. Oh, look, it's fogging up the camera. That's always a good sign. So we're going to baste it a little bit. Get some of that moisture put in. Gives it a little bit of extra flavor. You don't have to do this. It's just something I like to do. So I'm going to put just a little bit of juice on, and then we're going to even those vegetables back out. Another good thing to put in here would probably be some um, fresh green beans, because while the meat is cooking, the green beans would actually start getting very tender and flavorful as well. So, All right, so that's all I wanted to do. Just check it out. Let's see where we're at right now. We're going to let it keep going. See you soon. All right, guys, we've got about an hour and a half left on this. It's actually really tender. You see, I've already pulled it out of here. What I'm doing is I'm slicing it up. Um, I like to slice it up and then put it back in so that the, all that nice juice gets inside the meat uh, versus just on the outside and surrounding. So we're going to go ahead and just take our fork. You see how tender it is? I mean, our fork just goes right through it. And we're just going to kind of drop it back in there, and then we'll arrange it here in a second. Smells really good. I'm sure the vegetables are nice and tender at this point. It all looks nice. So let's get it put back in the pot and we will go from there. Let's see what we got. Get that extra piece of meat that's over here. Just going to lay it down. Just kind of cover it up like that. We won't necessarily eat those slices like that, but what that does is just kind of helps get that meat in there, and then we can slice and dice how we want when we, once it's finished and we're ready to eat. So we're going to put that lid back on, and we're going to let it basically just simmer for the next hour, and we'll have a nice meal. See you soon. 
All right, guys, so we're down to our last 30 minutes of cooking. It's re really ready to go at this point. So I'm just going to let's see what we got going on here in the pot. You can see we've got our vegetables cooked. We've got our meat nice and sliced up. It's got all that wonderful juice put in there. Be good with some biscuits, like I said earlier, even a nice side salad. So we're going to go ahead and turn this off, let it sit on warm until we're ready for dinner. And, yeah, we're ready for a great meal. So thanks for enjoying this wonderful meal that we've made and if you like our video please subscribe to our channel like it and let us know if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see us cook next so you know we always say why go out to an expensive restaurant when you can have a great meal at home and have leftovers later and it'll be better than takeout thanks for watching